Hi, everybody. It's me, Karen Holton, back with another podcast. I think this podcast is one of the most difficult podcasts for me to share with you. And um, uh, I've had it for a couple of weeks. My guides have been telling me this information, and I knew I needed to make a podcast about it. But I don't know how it's going to be received. And I guess it doesn't matter because it feels like the right thing to do. And there's no point in saying what people should or shouldn't be doing, especially regarding their health, because people are doing exactly what it is that they plan to do. And it's not for me to judge you or to reprimand you or to say that you have to do things differently. So um, this, I'm going to be careful about the language I'm using here because I would really like this to stay up on YouTube if possible to reach more people. But it's basically about the transhumans and the purebloods, or the purebloods and the transhumans. So um, what exactly do I mean? What exactly am I talking about? So the basic definition, as I understand it at this point in time, is that transhumans are people who have had their natural genetics altered through gene therapy. And they are now legally considered to be GMO, genetically modified organisms. Now, I know this sounds like something right out of a science fiction movie, but the truth of the matter is when we alter our genetics artificially through man, human made um, interventions, what happens is our genetics have changed forever. There's no going back once this is done. So people who are transhumans are people who were human, fully human, and then they had their genetics changed through a medical procedure, and they are now genetically modified. Unfortunately, um, the courts in the U.S. have declared these individuals as a property of the organization who created the gene editing therapy and they no longer have their natural status. And because they no longer have their natural status, they legally no longer have rights as human beings. Now, I know you all have rights, but I'm just talking from a legal perspective now about what's going on. Yeah, I do have some notes, so please forgive me if I refer to them from time to time, but I just wanna make sure I get this information as accurate as possible and say it in the most succinct ways without going on too many um, different tangents. So on the other hand, there's pure bloods and pure bloods are people who have their natural genetics intact as they have been passed down through generations via natural uh, natural experiences of impregnation and birth. So these people have not received any gene editing um, therapy. Now, I want to be really clear at this point that there's no hierarchy between the two kinds of humans that now exist on Earth. And I know there might be other kinds of humans that are um, hybrids between alien races and humans and things like that. But right now, I'm just talking about the human um, experience, the human condition on its own, with the only um, influencing factors being that of um, the gene editing therapies. So pure bloods are people who have their natural genetics intact, which means that they've never had gene editing um, therapy of any kind. And as I mentioned, there's no hierarchy between these two kinds of human beings. Because most transhumans became this way through deception and definitely a lack of informed consent. And many pure bloods are actually well on their way to becoming transhumans because their bodies are so contaminated by years of fake food, synthetic chemicals, and toxins. Although this can be reversed to some, to some degree, very few are willing to take the time and the effort to habituate themselves back to natural, uncontaminated or non-genetically modified foods 
and a detoxifying lifestyle. A healthy body can only be maintained by removing the toxic elements and by ingesting clean, toxic free or foods free from toxic ingredients or um, things like pesticides, herbicides, things like that, that add more toxic chemicals to your system. So if a pure blood uh, person eats mostly chemicals and synthetic food, their bodies will be mostly synthetic and toxic. Eating man-made chemicals produces an artificial body, which is only a step away from becoming a transhuman body. So I'd like to speak a little bit more to that by saying that um, all humans have been duped the last hundred years, maybe even longer. Our food supply has been changed and changed and altered and become more synthetic, more refined. And I'll give you an example uh, from the drug world. There is an appropriate um, use for um, some of the derivatives that are from poppies like opium. But once you refine that and refine that and refine that, it becomes heroin. You would never find heroin natural in, um, in our world, in our natural world. It has to be refined by humans to become heroin. And at that point, it's no longer medicinal. At that point, although it does um, help with pain relief, it's highly addictive and it really can wreak havoc on the, havoc on the human body. And if you refine it more and more and more, you end up with oxycodone. And if you refine it more and more and more, you end up with fentanyl. And at each level of refining, those elements have been so far removed and so altered from their natural state that they no longer are good for the human body. They are no longer good for a medical application. They're no good really for anything except addiction and to create funds for nefarious organizations. Please do your research and you will find out more about uh, what I'm saying, but it's beyond the scope for me to really get into it here. So in the same way, if we are eating so-called foods that have been refined and refined and refined and chemicals added to them, they no longer support the health of the individual. And what happens is, um, you go to the grocery store and look at the labels and try to find foods that don't have MSG, don't have sugar or some sugar derivative, don't have some kind of chemicals in it. Believe me, it's very difficult to find pure, natural, clean food anymore. And so what happens is people just get used to eating this kind of stuff. People don't cook that much anymore. They don't buy the ingredients, the simple, healthful ingredients to make the recipes. They're buying prefabricated, chemical-laden um, foods that are building a toxic and synthetic body. Because your body can only create from what the elements that it's given. So for instance, if your body is given a clean health food, um, a lot of food in its natural or raw state, your body knows what to do with that. Everything that we eat from that state is a prepackaged um, system of elements that will help to build healthy, clean, efficient bodies. But when we start to use things, especially with food preservatives, what happens is the life force is removed from those foods. So we're not getting our life force that we need. And that's really important for keeping our pineal gland working well and for our thinking to be clear. And of course, our spiritual contact. Again, if we're eating preservatives, those preservatives are meant to give foods a 25 year shelf life, if not longer. So you eat them and what happens is they infiltrate your, your um, digestive system and they prevent you from digesting the very foods you need to build authentic human bodies. And over years and years and years, we see all this disease creeping in, diseases that people never even heard of 200 years ago because the body can't sustain itself with this artificial fake stuff. And then if you want to add the toxic effects, the top toxic effects of the pharmaceuticals that are prescribed by the allopathic 
health industry, we're really getting toxified. And then you add, you, you consider what's added to the water, what's added to the atmosphere, what our clothes are made out of. Do you know how hard it is to find organic cotton anymore? It's all GMO, which means that we're wearing herbicides and pesticides that are leaking out of the fabrics into our body systems because 20% of our blood is um, flowing through our skin and we're picking up and we're circulating all that through us. So my point here is that pure bloods, although they may not have taken gene editing um, devices or therapies, they might well be on their way and um, to being a synthetic being, which is only one step away from being a transhuman. And in some cases, you may even consider them already transhuman. So there is no hierarchy. Pure bloods are not superior or better than um, transhumans. But we both are still within the milieu of humanity. And so my guides have given me some really specific instructions to pass on to you. So although neither transhumans nor pure bloods are superior, the pure bloods are the only ones that have full human rights. And with our full human rights, we can make decisions, we can decide on things, we can mark our line in the sand, and we can use our God-given ability to help protect the transhumans and to help um, change the system through whatever legal means is left um, in this world that we're experiencing. And if we survive, we must work together to improve our current conditions. And since an estimated 80% of the world's population has participated in gene therapy, there's no point in arguing with each other about it. What is done is done. So I have some things here that I want you to consider. If you are a pure blood, then have some compassion for the transhumans. It is human nature to follow the crowd and believe what so-called experts tell us about advice. These people have not been given anything close to informed consent. And so they have been deceived. Next, have empathy for the transhumans. Consider what they might be going through with adverse reactions, lack of critical aftercare, and the death of their loved ones. And can you imagine the waking up, the shock, and the waking up that is going on for these individuals once they start to realize what has been done to them? Okay, this is huge, huge. Next. Wherever possible, collect detoxification protocols and alternative healing techniques to share with the transhumans should they ask for it. Transhumans have the choice on what they want to do about their situation. They might not want to do anything about it, or they might want to get on some of the protocols that have been introduced by specialists, doctors, and scientists and people who have been health gurus for many years. And apparently there are things we can do about it. So I'm not talking here about collecting data that's just willy nilly from the internet because we can't really believe anything we hear anywhere. It's really hard to verify and separate fact from fiction. And some of it may even be wishful thinking. So it's up to you to do the research to make sure the sources for this information is accurate and doable, and please make it available. Create lists or um, email lists, or, or I shouldn't say email lists, um, just lists of links that you can email to people. Just keep a bit of a data store so that when people around you who are transhuman decide they wanna do everything they can to improve their situation, then you can give it to them in a very simple format. Let them do their own research from there and decide which protocols might be best for them. 
Another important point for the pure bloods is to assist by providing resources for the newly awakened. We are experiencing unprecedented awakening amongst humanity at this point. That is one of the good things that's come from all the disaster that's going on on this planet. People are waking up. And I don't know about you, but the waking up process for me was rather messy and very uncomfortable. And so these people are going to need resources because when they're in a heightened state of stress or fear from having their awakening take place, it's hard to think clearly and to know where to go for information. So please do provide resources to the um, transhumans should they ask for it. The next thing you can do as a pure blood is to start taking better care of your health. And this is why my message has not been popular. This is why I haven't gone viral. And this is why I don't have thousands and thousands of subscribers to my YouTube and Odyssey channels. It's because this is tough stuff to deal with. And most people are not willing to do it. And that's why I always say there's a, a huge um, sense of, or lack of self-love on this planet right now, where people are not willing to make the tough decisions to take good care of themselves. So I recommend that you, you refuse to eat anything that's processed, GMO, and chemically ridden. Just refuse to eat it. Yeah, it's tough. You will go through some severe withdrawal symptoms. To be really honest with you, my getting off of a mainstream diet and getting onto a specialized healing eating plan was more difficult for me and took longer than quitting smoking cigarettes, getting off of prescription drugs, especially the pain drugs, the drugs for pain, pain drugs, the drugs that are supposed to alleviate pain and help with pain and suffering, highly addictive, very difficult to get off of. Coffee was really difficult to get off of. And of course, quitting alcohol completely also was a big challenge for me. And I've had other addiction issues that I've also dealt with. But changing my diet was the toughest because what happens is all that toxic buildup has to be let go of and removed from the body. And so we get sick, really, really sick. And another thing, take a look at the obesity crisis. That is caused by the accumulation of toxins, which are also called obesogens. Your body will create body fat to store away the chemicals that are poisoning you in an effort to try to take them out of the way so that your body can still function. And often for those that don't have a good diet, don't have a healthy lifestyle, that's a huge thing to ask the body. So it just keeps producing fat over and over and over again to store those chemicals away. And most of the information we've been given over the years about our health, food, obesity is all made up lies. It's just all made up lies. And I know this is a lot to take in, but please listen to my words Take from them as much as you can handle and perhaps come back and watch this podcast again once you feel more settled. So I'm recommending for the pure bloods. You can't just go, oh, I'm so smart. I'm a pure blood. I avoided the medical device. No, it doesn't work that way. Because like I said, if pure bloods are doing nothing but consume and be exposed to harsh chemicals that are poisoning them and poisoning the body temple, they got nothing to brag about. I'm sorry. I'm just saying it how I see it here. I also want to recommend that everybody get off of all kinds of sweeteners. That is the number one addiction in this world. And it is so terribly, tragically harmful, regardless of whether it's synthetic, low calorie or no calorie or keto, or whether it's just plain old sugar or worse yet, um, glucose and refined sugars that are made out of corn and which is GMO to start with and everything else. You need to get off the sweeteners. And if that doesn't wake you up, nothing will. Absolutely nothing will. You also want to get off of refined carbs, 
and vegetable oils, which are omega-6. If you can get off sweeteners, if you can get off processed GMO and chemical ridden foods, if you can get off of refined carbs and vegetable oils, your body and your mind and your soul will come together and start operating on a new rational level. And you will just know what's best to eat. I don't have to tell you, follow this diet, follow that diet, eat meat, go vegan. I don't have to tell you any of those things. You will know what to do because your body is very, very wise. And of course, your soul, which is indestructible, is the wisest of all. So please heed my warning. And then I want you to value your pure blood status by refusing to support the fake food, medical, military, media, industrial complexes. Extract yourself one point at a time and keep doing that. Because right now, most of the world is asleep, is in a hypnotized state, and we are supporting the very forces that are bringing about our demise. We need to stop supporting all of it and go back to a more natural, loving way of living. And then you can be with pride, call yourself a pure blood. Pure blood. But until then, I, you got nothing to brag about. I'm sorry, I'm just saying it how I see it. Now the transhumans, what about the transhumans? Well. First of all, protect the pure bloods. This is really, really important. And things are not that much different today than the way they were back in Nazi Germany. And there were all kinds of people who were German, who helped the Jewish people, the Polish people, whoever the oppressed groups were, and there was quite a few of them, to escape or to be safe. And I want you to think about doing that for your pure blood brothers and sisters. And I'll tell you why, as I mentioned before, it's because they still have human rights. They can advocate for themselves and the rest of humanity. And all of us, whether we are pure bloods or whether we're transhumans, we're still part of humanity. And so there are things that pure bloods can do that the transhumans won't be able to do. And although this may be, not be really evident right now, boy, a time is coming where it sure will be. And um, the other thing is the pure bloods contain genetically the original, our original physiology, uh, which is necessary for making contact with other realms. So I'm not going to condemn the transhumans here, but I am going to say that the transhumans will have a more difficult time using their pineal gland, using their deep imagination. Um, contacting the spiritual realms, um, accessing the angelic realms, accessing all the very things that they need help from so very, very much. But the pure bloods, we still can do that. And we are still doing that. And we can do that on your behalf. So our prayers are getting through. Our This is really, really important stuff, guys. Really important stuff. We, our prayers, the pure bloods, our prayers are still being heard, and we can advocate for the rest of humanity, and that is worth protecting. So please, transhumans, rather than looking down on the pure bloods, please do everything you can to protect the pure bloods. Next. Take responsibility for your present condition and for your own healing and awakening process. What I mean by that is ultimately, you allowed a procedure that you didn't know very much about to happen to you. You have to take responsibility for the part you played, and you need to take responsibility that this has indeed happened. And so far, we don't know how to reverse it. We just don't know. There's so much. We don't know. But if you take responsibility for your status and for your healing, there are so many things that you can try. Now, I would recommend watching um, podcasts by Greg Braden and by um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. 
and many others who can teach you how to repair your own DNA. And there are so many helpful things out there, frequency healing, sound healing, um, healing um, avenues that have pretty much been made fun of in the mainstream, but actually work. Take responsibility for finding out what these healing modalities are and find out which one resonates with you and which ones you would like to try. And then, of course, all of this is bringing about a huge awakening amongst all of humanity. So for the transhumans, take responsibility for your awakening process. Take responsibility for however old you are, how many years you've been living in the mainstream, doing what the mainstream told you, basically being controlled and hypnotized by the advertising elements of the media, which is actually almost all the media nowadays. Take responsibility for your awakening process. When it hurts, cry. When you are distressed, feel distressed. Feel all of the human emotions because this is part of your healing and your cleansing process. So this is what I, uh, I recommend. And ultimately, guys, we have to work together if we are to survive. Let me say that again. We must work together if we are to survive. And I have a few things that will help you. I recommend that you take the Quantum Health Transformation course. The playlists are um, on, I have two playlists on YouTube, and I have the complete program on my website. It's absolutely free. It's no strings attached. And it will help you to think on a more holistic level. It'll help you to get in touch with your energies. It'll help you to understand why and how you need to detoxify. You need to detoxify externally everything that comes in contact with your body, whether it's the air or the water, whether it's the clothes you wear, whether it's your cleaning products, whether it's your makeup. All of those things need to be addressed. It also will teach you how to find out about food, real food and how that can help to detoxify you. And so that's part of the internal detoxification process. Then there's also emotional detoxification that needs addressing. And then finally, we need to address a detoxification from the construct, from the fake world that we've been told is the only reality as we discover other ways of knowing and other wisdoms that we have. And again, the transhumans can go to the pure bloods for this information. And of course, there's tons and tons available still on the internet. After you've done all of that, the quantum health transformation course will help you to put your spirituality together. And once you're following the recommendations, there's nine steps. The first three are to open your awareness and help you to understand what you're dealing with and who you are and how your energy works. The middle three uh, steps of the program are all about detoxification. The last three are to, how, to help you to find your spirituality, find out how to manifest in a way that really works and really satisfies and really um, improves your life. Learn how to build your own spiritual team and learn how to do certain exercises to strengthen your virtues so that you can open up avenues of reality you didn't even dream were possible before. And this program is completely free. I downloaded it from spiritual and off-world sources. And very specifically, it's cost me a lot of time, a lot of years of work, and a lot of money to get this program out to you without asking anything in return. The only thing I ask is that you try it you think about it, you look it over, and you consider it. And I know it will help people one way or another, because otherwise it wouldn't have been given to me to share with all of you. And by the way, I follow the same course myself. Remember, I was talking about how hard it was to get over my fake and bad food addiction. Well, I weighed over 320 pounds most of my adult life. But the quantum health uh, transformation program cured me of that. 
And so although my weight may fluctuate 10 pounds or so either way, I no longer am faced with that curse of morbid obesity and all the metabolic issues that go along with it. So I follow the course and continue to follow the course myself. What happens is when you've gone completely through it, and it takes time, you can't just read it and go, okay, done. Okay, done. You know, flipping through the different steps. It doesn't work like that. It only works when it's processed internally. And then you take from it what you want and you start to exercise those skills and those abilities and you start to practice a healthier lifestyle, then things start to happen for you. So I've actually done it several times and I continue to do it because each time I go through it, I go to a deeper level of understanding and application. So that's there absolutely free to everybody. Please share it with everybody you know who you think could benefit from it. The next thing we all need to do is spend time using relaxation and visualization techniques to create and enjoy the paradise that each of you wishes for yourself and others. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I've got four podcasts that are meant to go together that are on my YouTube channels and also on my website. And it's all about the therapeutic bath. It is the most effective way that I have found to detoxify at the same time, finding a deep state of relaxation at the same time, making better contact uh, with my spirit guides when I'm feeling a little bit, um, let's say, spiritually thirsty or dry. But it's really a perfect place because we become, our energies are so amplified when we're in the therapeutic bath, which is very different than um, just an ordinary cleansing bath or um, anything like that. It's a really great way to connect with your spiritual sources. And what I want everybody to do, whether you're pure blood or transhuman, is to start thinking about what, if you had a magic wand and you could bring paradise to planet Earth, what would that look like? And for most of us, it, we, were all, we would all be in agreement because there would be aspects of that paradise that we would all want. You know, an abundance of clean, healthy food for everybody, fresh, clean water, fresh air peaceful habitats, people no longer living in um, population dense environments and in, in, in um, polluted cities, we'd all have our own spaces, we'd all have our gathering places, we'd have our own favorite things like music and dancing and anything we want. We could have a free system where we just share everything with everybody. But you need to decide what does paradise mean to you and what would you like to see happen on this planet for yourself and all others? That's the key. It's not just about you. It's about all of us. And we need to all be here together. And while we do that, we're actually sending out energetic vibes to help create that very scenario. It is the most powerful thing you can do as a pure blood or as a transhuman is to practice visualizing that which you want and stop thinking about what you don't want. Just keep focusing on what you do. That's actually a harm reduction model. In a harm reduction model, which I learned at university because uh, at university I took family counseling and I also took addictions, how to deal with addictions, what are addictions, what addiction treatments work best for people. And really the only thing that really works is harm reduction. So instead of forbidding somebody from something that's not good for them, you just get them to focus on bringing in good and healthful things, practices, people, foods, whatever. And the negative stuff just kind of gets pushed to the back and falls off to the side. And one day you realize, wow, I don't even do that anymore. So um, it's really important that you, um, that you um, visualize what you want and you spend time, as much time as you can, at least once a day, thinking about what you would like to see for conditions and the way things would be just lovely for you on planet Earth. So, and the key is to wish it for yourself and others. It has to be for all of us if it's going to work. 
And from there, I want you to work on creating an alternative reality that's free from oppression, sickness, and regret. Now, you might say, well, how can we do that? Well, it's actually not that hard. You just, by working with your visualization techniques, you decide on what you really, really want to see, and that starts to present itself in your life. So for instance, maybe you got some people that every time you're around them, you feel really tired, you feel exhausted afterwards, you feel like you gave so much of yourself and got so little in return. And you just stop contacting or wanting to be around those people. And that makes room for some lovely people. And they don't have to be people from church, they could be people from anywhere, or even online. And you bring those people into your life and you start to have healthier relationships. Another thing you can do is plant a little garden, even just pot some edible foods as houseplants in your home. There's so many ways that we can create an alternative reality. And we can start believing that something else better is possible for all of us. And that what we're being told is not our eventuality, is not written in stone. I know people are going to say, what about the Georgia Guidestones? And I say, fuck the Georgia Guidestones, guys. So what? That has no power over you and no power over me. We are going to do what's best for us as it is revealed to us in our own personal way. Pardon my language, but you know, sometimes this stuff that's going on on this planet really pisses me off. So finally, I want to say, make use of the many resources available. Subscribe to my YouTube and my Odyssey channels. Now, I'm not saying I have the only truth and I have the only way and mine's the best. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, check out what I've said. Check out what I offer. See if it has value for you before you decide whether you want to keep, keep on subscribing or keep on watching my videos. But there's so much really important information that you might not be hearing any from anyone else or anywhere else. And again, watch my four, my four podcasts about the therapeutic bath. They are available on both my YouTube channel and my Odyssey channel. And it's even available um, uh, under the free resources tab of my website. And again, check out my free resources available on my website and subscribe to my website newsletter so that you can be kept up to date. And the free resources, I'm always adding to that. There's all kinds of stuff, whether it's one of the shows that I host, whether it's an audio podcast or a video podcast or something else. Do make use of those free resources. And there's plenty to keep you busy for quite some time. Again, the Quantum Health Transformation Program. Make sure that you check out the entire program. Some people kind of get stuck at step nine. I know this is going to sound funny, but you start on step nine and that builds a foundation for step eight, which builds a foundation for step seven. And it goes all the way up to the last step you take is step one. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I wanted it to kind of open you up for other ways of thinking about things. So um, some people get stuck on step nine because it's got a lot of quantum physics and a lot of conceptual abstract thinking to it. Don't worry if you don't get it 100%. Don't worry if you don't even understand it, but do go through the material. Some of it will sink in, some of it won't. You can always come back and do it over again, but do make use of this amazing free resource. In fact, I won't even know if you've accessed it unless you, you know, give me a comment on one of my videos or you send me an email. I wouldn't even know. So I'm not going to pursue you if you take it and, 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 you know, try to get you to do other things. I'm not going to do that. It's just free. Take it as it is and enjoy. Next, I want to uh, suggest, especially if you're newly awakening, substitute alternative media for mainstream and don't believe the mainstream news. So what I've come to see uh, is that everything that's on mainstream is a lie. Everything. It's they take little shreds of information and they catastrophize it and they amplify it. And they just are going by ratings because ratings gives them how many views and the views they get is what they use to sell their program to the advertising agencies who then want to advertise their stuff, their junk, 
mostly toxic garbage um, through the media. And that's what's driving it, not you and not me. Don't watch it. Just don't watch it. Refuse to watch it. And you're going to go through a bit of a detox when you decide to do that too. Now, moving over to alternative news, don't believe it either. I mean, believe some of it, but don't believe, don't feel like you got to believe every show you watch because everybody has different experiences. They have different uh, ways of looking at things, they have different bits of advice. Some of it's complete BS, and some of it, although very sincere, is not exactly accurate. And how will you know? Well, I'll tell you how you will know. It won't take long before you're able to, to uh, sense your gut reaction. You're able to sense what's real for you and what's not, what you're willing to take in and what you're not willing to take in. Some of it might be that you're not ready for it because reality is truly stranger than fiction. And some of it just might be BS, but you will know, especially if you start to watch it. And um, some of it is actually quite funny and, and some of it's pretty sad. And if it's too traumatizing for you, put it aside and come back to it later if and when you're ready. And the other thing I want to say is check out um, different groups like the Forbidden Knowledge News Network. Because uh, Chris Matthews started the Forbidden Knowledge News, and then he teamed up with uh, Corey Hughes, and they have put together an amazing, amazing network. And so I myself am part of this network, but there are other people that are also doing podcasts. They're featured every week. Um, Chris and Corey are doing their own combined and separate podcasts, but everything has value. Everything on the Forbidden knowledge network has extreme value for you you will learn more than you ever thought you could know and it's kind of like one-stop shopping and no i'm not getting paid to say this <laughs> these are people who i trust these are people that i go to for information so i want you to think about that if you have any questions leave them in the comments or send me an email i'll do my very best to get back to you Please understand that sometimes I get so many emails from people, I just can't get back to everybody. There just isn't enough hours in the day, but I'll do my best. And so basically that is what I've been asked to share with you, to talk about the difference between pure bloods and transhumans, that there is no hierarchy, that we need to help each other, that we need to work together so that we can improve conditions on planet Earth. We all need to work on our very existence as far as our spirituality, our physiology, our biology, what we eat, how we maintain the temple body, absolutely essential for building the kind of uh, gifts and experiences we get through, from the spiritual realms. So um, I guess that's about it for today. And I do thank you for joining me. And um, yeah, happy to hear your comments. I know some of you won't agree with me and I'm okay with that. It's not about convincing you. It's about sharing resources that may be helpful. That's what's really important, that I be helpful. It seems to be my mission in life. Anyway, I love you all, and uh, I just wish you a really good week, and um, I'm hoping and praying and visualizing a day when all this madness just comes to an end.